I'm Professor Daniel Balti. I'm a physicist at the University of Oxford, and for 15 years I've been working and playing with MRI scanners. Over the last century, great leaps in technology have led to astounding medical breakthroughs, and the pace of innovation is getting quicker. So in this series, I'm getting out of my lab to explore the fascinating science and history behind some of the most important and revolutionary incredible medical machines. We're familiar now, surprisingly, with the idea of having pacemakers and cochlear implants and aspects of medical technology that are mimicking the human body. But these advancements are also improving another aspect of life we don't see every day, and that's training for medical emergencies. Here at the Oxstar Centre, they can simulate realistic medical scenarios without having to practice on real people. So Rosie, what are we going to see today? We're going to show you a scenario. And we've got um, John Roberts in there who is a patient who um, has come into ED with an asthma attack. Okay. And we are going to treat him for his asthma. So is there any way that I can actually get involved and take part in this scenario? So have you done your basic life support? Yes, I have. Oh, well, you'd be great at chest compressions then. Wow. So you can do some chest compressions and maybe some bagging of the patient as well. Wonderful. All right then. So let's come and see the patients. All right. Okay, so we have a variety of uh, mannequins that we use in the, in the, in the centre. <laughs> so we have our um, birthing mannequin. Right. And we have our little cute three-year-old mannequin. Um, <laughs> but this is the mannequin that um, we'll be working with today. This okay. is going to be Don Roberts, your patient. So um, <laughs> let's get you into scrubs and um, we'll get going. Wonderful, thank you. While the Oxstar team prepare their simulation scenario, operator Charlie McDermott shows me what these advanced mannequins are capable of. Show me your puppet master's skills. <laughs> I, I will do my best. <laughs> Today, Charlie is controlling this adult sim man who they've named John Roberts. So it's probably easiest to start with uh, the monitor display that, that we have uh, up here. So this is the parameters that are running at the moment. It's how I can control and change right. uh, the patient's heart rate, blood pressure, uh, saturation levels. And you've got a whole range of different um, sims that you can use, don't you? This is not the only one. That's correct. So we've, we've programmed in uh, a number of scenarios to, um, to help us quickly set up uh, for, for any particular situation. Um, and then depending on the day, we, we can just load them up and, and off we go. The Oxstar sims can display a whole range of physical, tangible symptoms, from a heart attack to lockjaw. Charlie then adds to the realism by taking on the patient's voice and communicating with the staff through a microphone. It's now time for the team to start the scenario. I've trained in resuscitation, and so I'm going to literally have a hands-on role. Uh, John Roberts, John Roberts. John, hi John, yeah. how are you? This is really, really hard to, to catch my, catch my breath. Yeah, you could, you could get some water. Okay, do you, do, you, do you ever have this before, John? Yeah. I've got, I've got asthma. Oh, you have. So, have you taken your inhalers this morning? Yeah, yeah, yeah but they, 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 didn't, they didn't do anything. Yeah, John, John, I'm just going to put on your shirt. I just need to put these little leads on your chest, okay? Okay. Although the team know what the patient's problem will be, they can suddenly be faced with an issue they haven't been warned about and have to react as quickly as they would in real life. Oh, I'm really worried. Oh, Medical staff are expected to treat the mannequins with as much care and compassion as they would a real patient. Deep breaths as you can. All right, just concentrate on your breathing. Well done. John's suspected asthma attack turns out to be a tension pneumothorax, or collapsed lung, and he's about to take a turn for the worse. OK, just take a little sample of blood from there, OK? Hello? That's can you hear me? Well Yes. Can you start chest compression for me, please? Certainly. Cardiac arrest. He becomes unresponsive and goes into cardiac arrest. Two. Okay, cardiac arrest calls out. Can you get can you get airway for me, please, Alan? Yes, of course. Okay, I've got a size four eye gel in. Oh well. Here is established. Rebecca's just taking the gas, so hopefully we'll get the result back. So hypothermia, did we do a temperature? Tension in the thorax. So I just thought that could be actually a potential. Are you okay, that, Dan? Yes, guys. It's quite hard. It certainly is. 
chest compressions can quickly become tiring, so we take it in turns. Before long, it becomes clear that the team will need to use a defibrillator to shock the patient's heart back into rhythm. Okay, all right, well done. Do you have that other oxygen mask? Mr. Roberts, can you hear me? Can you open your eyes for me? Where is that rest? Well done. All right, how are you feeling? You okay? Still a bit difficult to breathe? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah? Oh, well done. Okay. That was intense. <laughs> that was just remarkable. I, I can't believe how immersed you get in that so quickly. It's, that's, yeah. I'm glad you made it, buddy. You've done well. <laughs> well, despite the fact he doesn't, he obviously doesn't look very human in a, in a way, you just get totally immersed in it. It's, it's, you just get caught up in the atmosphere and, and, I was exhausted doing the chest compressions, but you couldn't stop because the guy's life depended on it. Uh, it was really, it was just surreal. My, my heart rate is going like crazy as well. Um, and every time I felt like I was doing something wrong, you just had this real sense of panic that, you know, this guy's life is on the line. How did I do then? Well, as a patient, I felt very reassured. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Uh, I thought you did great. So, how, how did you manage to do all the things that you were just doing there? I mean, I was completely convinced that I had a, a real person on the bed, despite the fact that he looks a bit funny. That, that's <laughs> the idea, so I'm glad that worked out. The voice acting does uh, play quite a big part in adding to the realism. Yeah, I mean, the, fir the first time that um, he spoke back to me, I, it was a bit freaky, actually. Yes. <laughs> yeah, was, not, not I really wasn't expecting him to answer me when I was speaking, so... Yes. I'm glad, I'm glad you got immersed into the situation, that's, that's exactly our goal. So were you measuring how I was doing with my chest compressions and, and so that, the bag? That was a, an, an automatic recording by the software, so I didn't have to do anything. Uh, there's a, a quite a neat feature with this particular software which shows the, the depth and the rate uh, of your compressions. Right, how did I do? <laughs> and, and you did fantastically. I had no idea that, that these facilities existed. But just having experienced that, uh, I can see how valuable they are. These mannequins may look goofy, but they're doing an incredibly important job. In the pressured environment of emergency departments, health professionals need to react quickly and work seamlessly. Every second counts. And with these sims, they're ensuring that time is kept to a minimum.